We're doing another one of our ITC energy reports. And let me lead, read this about uh, Tony Massesso, who is the manager of state and government affairs at ITC. And what he's going to be talking about is this, as industries like manufacturing and data technology grow more advanced, and surely they are, their energy needs grow greater and greater. Ensuring that our businesses and community power needs are met requires legislative collaboration on both sides of the political aisle. That has to be tricky. So uh, (laughs) here to talk about how he works this magic is Tony. So let's start with that first question. Thanks for joining us today. And why don't you kick things off by, I know what ITC is and Matt does, but probably a lot of other folks don't. So start with that. Yeah, thanks for having me on today. Uh, Super excited to dive into the intersection of policy and energy. As you mentioned, it's extremely complicated and there's a way to finesse it sometimes, but we'll we'll talk about that later. Uh, In short, the power that keeps the lights on in homes and businesses flows through a a three-part system, generation, transmission, distribution. ITC is in the middle of that in transmission. Uh, We are the nation's largest independent uh, electricity transmission company. Unlike other local power companies, we're uniquely focused on just the transmission portion of the system. So basically, we move power from where it's made to where it's needed through the high voltage system. Uh, We develop, build, and maintain that infrastructure that holds that three-part system together, uh, much like if you think about how the highways work within the country's network of roads. Uh, In my particular role as manager of state government affairs, I collaborate with government officials to work towards ITC's and the energy industry's goals Uh, which involves networking with policymakers, local representatives, and such to advocate for the transmission of reliable uh, and affordable energy. Okay, Uh, but before we dive into uh, what you want to talk about today, how about providing a little bit of background uh, on yourself uh, personally? What led you to a career in energy? Absolutely. Uh, Before I joined ITC back in 2021, I spent uh, much of the last, uh, the previous decade, uh, working in various legislative staff roles in the Michigan House and Senate, Uh, When you're on legislative staff, which is a a fun place to be, you need to know a little bit about a lot of different things. And uh, one of those things that um, through several of my bosses over time worked on was energy policy. And I became, uh, frankly, enamored with energy policy. And so when the opportunity came up to do a deeper dive into energy and be more specific into this industry, uh, and particularly here at ITC, um, I jumped at it and didn't look back. To set the stage for the rest of our conversation, can you explain how energy use and demand is changing? What are some of the biggest drivers in the need for more energy and new energy sources? So major trend driving a lot of the change in the energy sector right now is the transition toward clean energy, um, both in the utility side and the policy side. So as utilities retire coal plants and state legislatures and, and the federal legislature, Uh, starts to dictate a path toward more clean energy resources, uh, we have to adjust to match those goals and that push. Um, And further, our energy needs are growing. We're seeing significant investment when you're talking about data centers, uh, which require a lot of energy. Uh, Michigan in particular is working toward onshoring manufacturing facilities and bringing uh, a lot of jobs back here to Michigan. Uh, Bringing those jobs to Michigan drives up our demand for energy, both when you're talking about the manufacturing plant itself and the people that can be attracted back to the state that will be uh, using the system. And frankly, whatever we view as a priority for our state in terms of economic development, uh, it likely requires large amounts of electricity. I mentioned the data centers, manufacturing, so on and so forth. Uh, But a robust transmission system is needed to transport that electricity. And our grid plays a crucial role in enabling our state's economic growth, even when the initiatives aren't directly tied to uh, some sort of energy policy or energy legislation. So talk a little bit, if you could, about why legislation and policy are so important uh, to the energy industry in general and ITC specifically. Yeah, energy and and transmission in particular is a highly regulated industry. So everything policymakers do in relation to uh, energy or otherwise impacts how ITC does business and and other utilities as well. Um, And improvements to our electric grid don't happen overnight. So it takes several years to complete a given transmission project. For example, we say, um, I probably touched on this a few times, it takes anywhere from seven to 10 years um, from start to finish to get a new project in. Mm-hmm. And so rapid shifts in policy that bring different priorities to the forefront can cause challenges for utilities. Um, when policies change every few years, we we can have a scenario where we're not seeing the full benefits of, of previous initiatives or previous projects um, simply because we've politically chartered a new course. 
Um, and on a broader level, our state's energy needs are only increasing. So whether we're onshoring jobs to grow the economy, we're trying to build more sustainable power generation, diversify power generation, these all require updates to our transmission system. So we want to enable the growth of our, of, uh, our state by ensuring that the power is making it from point A to point B, whatever that looks like. Can you expand on transmission's role in economic development? Yeah, we believe at ITC that uh, electric transmission is the key to unlocking our energy future. And strengthening our grid is a prerequisite to meeting state policy goals and attracting new businesses and jobs to our state and supporting their energy needs, as, as we uh, spoke about a moment ago. But access to clean energy is a high priority for many new businesses that are considering moving to Michigan. Um, according to the MEDC, Michigan actually ranks second in the nation for clean energy investments. We're going to have a significant amount of new and diverse energy generation coming online. And to accommodate that, we need to continue building our robust transmission system to carry this power to where it needs to be. Uh, continuing to invest in transmission is imperative to foster our pro-growth economic environment. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit, if you could, uh, about how policymakers at the local level and in Lansing uh, can better collaborate on strengthening the grid. Yeah, I'm happy to say, you know, we've made great strides even in the last few years in, in collaborating with state government on energy and economic development issues. Um, but in energy, the next challenge is always right around the corner. It's something that's great about this industry and, and also challenging. I mean, it's always changing. There's always something new. And so uh, we have to continue to come together with policymakers to find joint solutions to these. It, it can't be done um, without everybody rowing the boat in the same direction. Uh, as I mentioned before, rapid change in policy is detrimental for energy industry participants' long-term planning. Um, setting a direction for a utility isn't necessarily something that's crafted and implemented overnight. Uh, Energy-related in infrastructure projects take seven to 10 years uh, in transmission particular to plan and build. And so it's difficult for us to pivot to keep up with rapid shifts in political leadership and the associated policy shifts. But that's not to say that uh, we certainly don't understand why that would happen. Uh, it's just a matter of pointing toward, in energy, you look for consistency. And so while people's priorities do shift, um, a baseline of consistency of where we're headed overall is extremely important. Uh, we also feel that it's important uh, for energy companies to be involved early in the planning process when it comes to economic development opportunities. This is a really good uh, time to work on collaboration with the state because um, the earlier we're brought in, the more efficient the energy part of the project becomes for all parties involved, whether it whether it's securing the reliable energy, talking about cost effectiveness of set energy, uh, so on and so forth. It is better if we're involved, the earlier we're involved. Um, An overall energy infrastructure and political goals need to work in concert as best as they can, not as a reaction to one another. So how are governments working together now to improve our grid? So there's an ongoing focus on improving our interregional transmission planning. Uh, developing a more extensive network of transmission improves our state's import and export capabilities, which leads to improved reliability and more affordable energy. Um, this is really important when we're talking about building out the greater grid uh, and, and regional grids throughout MISO, PJM, et cetera. Um, and with the enhanced focus on economic development, many states are taking steps to rapidly improve their energy outlook to help attract business. As I mentioned before, um, this is on the short list of people looking to relocate or expand. Um, what's the energy situation look like? And so whether it's somebody wants to know how reliable it is, how clean it is, combination of both, um, it's not, like I said, it's on the short list. And so uh, sometimes in places where the energy issues of the day may be taking on a more polarizing tone, focusing on an economic development business case for it can sometimes allow for an easier topic for both parties to rally around. Now, that's not saying that uh, to your, your opening comment there about that must be easy. That doesn't necessarily solve all the political issues, but it certainly gives a little bit uh, more tone than just a, a little bit better tone than just let's have a philosophical conversation about energy. Right. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you real quick, I read a pretty interesting article uh, from Bloomberg over the weekend um, that there is in some places beginning to be local opposition to clean energy projects on what had been farmland. Uh, that, you know, these folks are arguing that, you know, we need open space, we need farmland, that we should site these things in brownfields instead. Um, how is ITC responding to that, if at all? Um, so we get involved really early with the communities that host our infrastructure uh, to try to walk them through what the project looks like. Um, 
what they can expect, where we're, you know, where we're exactly trying to go. Um, as much as I, I completely understand the arguments, sometimes it's not necessarily feasible to go where, where they're uh, pointing you towards. But when we're talking about uh, leasing an easement from so from so and so or going through town, being involved early and having uh, that early conversation with people is a much better, uh, say, set the stage moment than it is to um, in what those a lot of those articles write about where it's just someone showed up one day and that was that uh, we try to not do business that way. So. All right. Sounds good. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I would just like to reiterate, you know, we all rely on electricity. And so ideally, energy policy needs to be nonpartisan. Um, it doesn't matter, Democratic, Republican, whatever your leanings are, electricity is important. And so regardless of the type of generation or where the demand is coming from, transmission will remain essential to meeting our energy needs. We need to continue to focus on that. Uh, and lastly, I'd just like to say for everybody that may be new to ITC, um, if you'd like to learn more about ITC, you can go to itcmichigan.com.